Friday, y'all. And joining us now in the studio, Scott Waller, President and CEO of the Mississippi Economic Council. Good afternoon, Scott. Good to see you. Good to see you as well. Yes, sir. So we got the legislature in full swing down there, and I know you guys are are, uh, tracking uh, various bills that are navigating their way through the process. What's uh, what's on your mind right now? Well, it's it, it's interesting because a lot of stuff has happened really quickly, which yeah. I, it, is is a good thing, and particularly on on the front of you know the way our legislature is structured with our deadline system. You know, there's a lot of things that 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 kind of can hold off till later in the session, particularly on the revenue and uh, appropriation side. But we've already seen some. Some bills that are coming through that will have some impact on that, whether it's, um, you know, the teacher pay, which there's, you know, bills from both sides of, yeah. of the aisle and then uh, or, or, the, or the hallway. And then, you know, of course, um, you know, one of the things that had a lot of got a lot of attention last year was the, the tax, um, the tax bill. And we've gotten one one version is now out. And I think within the next few days, we'll probably see something from the Senate. So as, as we go through the process, I think we're starting to see a lot of those kind of things that are that are happening. But, you know, at the end of the day, there's a lot of work to be done, uh, particularly on how we are. we got to make sure we're utilizing the funds that we have available to us in a way that's going to bring about a positive impact on our state. And and from our perspective, that it all begins on how can we affect it in a way that makes our workforce stronger and better as we go forward. Yeah. So one thing, uh, Scott, of course, is the legislature is is uh, heads down figuring out how to spend all this money that the federal government has uh, dropped out of helicopters, as I like to say. Honest, we got 1.8 billion at the state level from the American Rescue Plan. Uh, what are your thoughts there? Are there any any particular it's somewhat restricted, of course. Is there anything in particular that you guys are well, supporting? Well, I think in general, I think there's two things that we'd like to see happen. One is, you know, when they held the hearings, it was kind of like, okay, come give us your Christmas list. What, yeah. is, what is it that you want? And a lot of things were overlapping, particularly in the workforce arena. And, yeah. and, and you know, we just recently, you know, in 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 the 2020 legislature, which was, you know, of course, later later than normal because of COVID, we did – we did actually make real progress in that front by creating the Office of Workforce Development. Yeah. And now that that office is being staffed and they're really focusing on branding and, and moving forward, I think there needs to be a little more coordination. And that's what we're going to we're, we're trying to to work with any of the groups that are looking at how do we how do we use these dollars in an effective manner that will have long term effects. And that's that's how do we get people trained for jobs that we have today? How do we get them the skills that are necessary, the, the the certifications that they need to show that we have a workforce that can meet the needs of today, but more importantly, that we can start looking at how do we bring new jobs, higher paying jobs. You know, ultimately, this is designed to raise our per capita income. Right. That is what, if, if that is not the focus of what we're working on, then we're kind of missing the point. Yeah. And I think this is, we've got an, op- we've got an opportunity. And, and I used to say you a few years ago when I was out on the road, I'd say the difference between temptation and opportunity is you're always going to get a second chance at temptation. <laughs> so we just got to make sure we take advantage of this opportunity and, and, and do it. And I think that's – so from from those dollars, we got to make sure we're putting them in, in, in a way that is a coordinated effort for workforce development, uh, any of those dollars that go in that direction so that we can really get the most of them. Yeah. Yeah, I understand. It's it's a bunch of money, and of course, uh, you know, my understanding is that uh, when uh, the lieutenant governor and the speaker went and asked for, hey, where do you guys think we ought to spend this money? Just talking to various interests and in, in, in groups that that uh, might be impacted, uh, they got they came up with seven billion dollars of requests, seven to eight, right? right. Of, uh, and we have one point eight. So I don't know exactly what that means in terms of what our true needs are. Uh, but yeah. it, nonetheless, I, I think we got to whittle that down and, yeah. and work within yeah. our restrictions. Exactly. What's, what, <laughs> what's the old cl- cliche? There's, there's a difference between need and want. Yeah, so we, exactly. If, if we can identify those needs, but, but more importantly, identify them in a way that makes sure that we're in, that we're investing these dollars that will provide a, a long-term return, and that, yeah. that's that's where it really matters the yeah. most. What are you hearing from your members, Scott, about uh, economic conditions and, and just uh, business status at this point? You know, it, it's interesting. We really started working back um, in August and September when we were on the road listening to what people were saying about how, how, we're, how we're doing as a state 
and, and it really depends on where you are. There are certain parts of the state that feel very positive about where we are. Unfortunately, there's also in, in more rural areas where they feel like it, things aren't going quite as good. Yeah. So I, I think the whole, the whole concept of what we're trying to focus on right now is how do we take the information that we just learned? And it was a, it was a lot of research that went into it and really develop kind of our next steps in terms of our goals and recommendations for, for moving us forward. We, we, have five, we really have five priority areas that we look at uh, at MEC, and this is based on our strategic plan. It's, one is education, workforce development, skills training. We see that as, a, as, as an across-the-board goal. How do, we, how do we focus on that? Secondly is, 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 is talent retention and attraction. You know, we, we've got to figure out a way to start growing, growing our state, both from population and, and workforce perspectives. Yep. Infrastructure remains a big deal, and infrastructure goes beyond just roads and bridges. Where we spend a lot of time, it, you know, broadband and, and, and the technology side of infrastructure. And, and you know this from your, your your previous life that this is key to helping grow our state. Sure. And then you know, then the overall business climate, and economic development. What are some things to do there that make sure we're growing? And then finally. You know, health care is a big part of our economy, and, you know, a healthy workforce is a productive workforce. And that's how – so we're looking at how do we take all of that and, and do that. But at the end of the day, they're all intertwined. But without that workforce and without that trained workforce, we're not going to be able to really start to attack the other issues. Yeah, I agree. And that, that of course, uh, all connects to what you, you uh, alluded to earlier, Scott, which is uh, per capita income. I would also add to that household income is a measurement as well. We're 50th in that regard, unfortunately. I, I've said this before. I'll say it again, even with you on the air. I'd like to see like a giant digital tote board that's on display in each chamber mm-hmm. that has our household income and, and per capita income and rank of the 50 states. Mm-hmm. For them to stay focused on your right. job is to increase that. A lot of problems get solved. Yes, when that goes up, I agree. And and that's and that's that's focusing on the main thing. Yeah, and that and that's that's where, you know, you know, we see at every legislative session. There's always going to be these things that come out that that are that are going to kind of grab the attention. But you know, at the end of the day, it, it's how do we move our state forward? Yeah. And how do we improve it from an economic standpoint? Yeah. I, I, I totally agree. So we've got uh, Capital Day coming up. Want we'll to talk about that? We March third. Right? March third. We rescheduled, of yep. course, with the with the the surge that happened right after Christmas, and mm-hmm. we felt like it was best. And we're very excited. Uh, you know, we're, we're excited that Super Talk has always been a part of that, and we look forward to looking to that forward as to always. It. But you know, again. We typically talk about what we expect to happen in the session. By having it on March third, we're going to talk a lot about what's already happened and kind of what the kind of what's going to happen in that yeah. last month of the of the legislative session this year. So we're excited about it. It'll be at the be at the Mississippi Trademark, and of course, uh, you know, we encourage people to to you know they they can go to the Capitol, see their legislators, or we'll have legislators down for our reception at noon, and just an opportunity for our members to get a chance to interact yeah. uh, here in Jackson with, with their legislators. Absolutely. Looking forward to that. Uh, the tax reform legislation, uh, any comments there? Do, do you feel like that what has uh, happened in terms of the way it's been uh, modified, was that an improvement in your view? Oh, yeah, without question. And I, and I will say this. I, I just want to tell, you know, I, I really applaud the House for the work that they're doing. I, I think that, you know, as we talked about earlier, I know there's something coming from the Senate very soon. Yep. I think the fact that we're having these discussions and, and, again, going back to where we were last year, you know, a lot of things were raised, particularly by the business community. A lot of those have been addressed, and, and I, I, I really appreciate that fact. That, And I, I look forward to continuing to work with, you know, all of the legislative leadership on, on where we go. You know, the, the thing is we want to make sure we have a very competitive and consistent and fair tax system. That's that's the bottom line. How can we, because that will improve our ability to attract companies, to attract folks. Sure. So working together, which is what we where we seem to be at this point of really kind of addressing any of the issues that may still exist, or or trying to combine the best of two worlds and find common ground. That's we're excited about having that opportunity. Good, good to hear that, and and hopefully we can get something that. 
is good for everybody. We all can live with and move forward, move the state forward. That's what we all want to do. It, it's all about moving us to the next level. Absolutely. Scott, appreciate you coming in. Always good to see you, my friend. And looking forward to MEC Capital Day, March 3rd, down at the Trademark. Should be a good one. Appreciate it. Thanks so much. You got it. We'll be back with more talk here on Middays. Lucian Smith's going to join us uh, before the hour.